drawing electric field lines. So the basic idea is I want to be able to make a simple picture that can show the electric field at all points in space. I can look at the electric field caused by one charge. So there it is, positive charge. So we'll make the line directly away from it. So let's say the field at point one caused by the charge on the left is this. Then looking at the field at point one caused by the charge on the right, that'll be a line going directly towards it because it's a negative charge. So let's say that the field caused by the negative charge is this blue line right here. So electric field is a vector, so I have to add them together the way that vectors do. So that would make this red line here the total field as a result of adding together the green line, which is the field from the positive Q, and the blue line, which is the field from the negative Q. So the red is the total field. So the idea is I could use that trick to figure out what the total field is at all these different points in space. So suppose I had two positive charges. I could do that for a whole bunch of points, add up all the total fields, and out of that I could get the electric field at any different point in space. Of course, there are an infinite number of different points in space where I could find the electric field, so I can save myself some time just by drawing these continuous lines, and the idea is that the electric field is the tangent to any one of these field lines that I draw. Now, if we want to draw electric field lines, it turns out if there are a few simple rules that we follow, we can get some pretty realistic pictures that are useful for considering what the electric field is. So the first rule is that electric field lines must start on a positive charge and end on a negative charge. And this matches up with our basic intuition that the field always goes away from positive charges and towards negative charges because that gives the direction that a positive charge would feel a force. The next rule is that the electric field lines must spread out kind of radially in all directions near a charge. And this makes sense because you wouldn't expect there to be more field on one side of a charge than another. You expect it to be radially symmetric. The third rule is that the lines must not cross, and the reason for this is if you have two lines crossed, then the direction of the field isn't defined anymore. Somehow you have a field going in multiple directions at once, which doesn't make any sense. The fourth and final rule is that the number of lines coming into or going out of a charge should be proportional to the magnitude of that charge. This works out because we expect that the electric field near a big charge is going to be stronger than the electric field near a weak charge, so it makes sense that we'd want to have more lines going into coming out of a strong charge than a weak charge. This also has the added benefit that if you draw lines radially coming out of a charge, that as you get further and further away from the charge, that the spacing between the lines gets larger and the field gets weaker as it should. So if I gave you electric field line drawings and I didn't tell you what the magnitude of the charges were in the drawings, you could still make a guess about where the bigger charges were based off of the charges that have more lines going into or coming out of them. This is called Gauss's Law, which you can figure out the magnitude of a charge simply by looking at how many lines are headed towards it or coming away from it. So let's do a quick example to actually try this out. Suppose you've got three charges, a plus Q, a plus 6Q, and a negative 2Q. Let's say I want to make three lines coming out of the plus Q. I'll distribute them relatively symmetrically around the charge. So if I've got three lines coming out of the plus Q charge, then I need to have twice as many lines coming into the negative 2Q charge. One of the rules is that you are allowed to make some of the lines that leave a positive enter a negative. You can connect them. So there, that's six lines, which is double the amount of lines that I have on the positive 1Q charge. How many lines do I need for the 6Q charge? I need six times as many as the 1Q charge, and I need three times as many as the 2Q charge. That means I need 18 lines leaving the positive charge. You'll see I pretty quickly run out of space because I haven't really planned this really well. Remember, you can't make the lines cross. I could put another line connecting them, but then this guy has too many. Count how many I have here. How many more do I need? Of course, I've got this empty space here, and I really shouldn't be doing that. So I should fill in some of that space so that they're coming radially symmetrically out of the plus 6Q charge, but then I have too many lines going into the negative 2Q, so I'll remove one of those, and that solves my problem. So now I've got three lines 
coming out of the plus Q charge, I've got six lines going into the negative 2Q charge, twice as many charge, twice as many lines, and I've got 18 lines coming out of the plus 6 charge, so it satisfies the rule. And remember, the density of lines shows the strength of the field, so I can look around at my final drawing and make statements about where the field is strong and where it's weak. Where is it the strongest? So it's strong right there where all the lines are, and then in the empty spaces where there aren't many lines, that's where the field is very weak. So even this simple picture, as ugly as it is, is really useful in predicting what the electric field looks like in different places near these three charges. Thanks for watching!